Hey, it's James here from eBay's Guitar, and today I want to show you a device called the 5 Minute James Jameson Motown Bassline Hack. If you love Motown grooves, make sure you check out this lesson. So I've just got hold of this wonderful P bass from my friend Kevin with flat round strings on it. It really does have that Motown and James Jameson sound and it's inspired me to make a lesson to show you a device that I use all of the time whenever someone says to me, can you play a Motown style groove? So the device I'm going to show you today, you can find in a ton of Motown bass lines from Reach Out, I'll Be There by the Four Tops through to Bernadette, through to What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. This is one of Jameson's stock ideas and you can use it too. But first of all, before we hit the lesson content, I'd love to find out what's your favorite Motown bass line. Please do let me know in the comments below. So James Jameson for me is the original master of creating and improvising incredible bass lines. Often they can sound super complex, but having played loads and loads of them over the years, there's this one idea that he comes back to time and time again, which you can install in your bass playing in as little as five minutes. And the great thing is it only uses three notes. So let me play it to you. So this is a one bar bass line, which literally uses the root, the fifth, and the octave and it's a shape that we can move around the neck and the other great thing is it will work over I guess about 80% of chord sequences too so it's super super flexible too. So in the key of C those three notes are G, sorry a C, a G and then the octave C there so you can catch the C at the third fret the G at the fifth fret and the C at the fifth fret on the G string. It makes a very distinctive pattern on the hands there. Don't forget, everything that we're covering today will be written out in a free PDF, which you can download using the link in the description below. So this bass line is a one bar bass groove, which has a very distinctive rhythm to it. So let me take you through it. It starts off with two notes, which are on the beat, which are dead simple, the root notes. So it's literally this, three, four, Nothing complex there. So this is where it gets interesting. Right at the end of the second beat on the last 16th note, he plays the G, which is the fifth, and he uses this as a way to jump up to the octave, and then he plays two eighth notes. So we end up with this pattern here. So, so first of all, get that down. My chosen way to finger this is a first, and then I get the third, or the fifth rather, with my third finger, and then the octave with my fourth finger, like that. So just try that again. Now, the fourth beat, we can improvise a little bit here, but my chosen pattern here is an eighth note and two sixteenth notes. So what I do is I go back to the G, and then back up to the C, and then back down to the G again. So we end up with this rim. And then that will lead us back down to the root on the first beat of the next bar. So let me play you that whole one bar to begin with. So this is a great pattern that you can now start moving around the fingerboard. But let me play it with the drums so you can hear it in context. So the basic pattern I've shown you there will work on any note which is rooted on either the E string or the A string. But now I want to show you a variation on that pattern where you're inverting this and you can actually drop down to the lower fifth. This is a little bit simpler in some respects but equally powerful. So let me play you what it sounds like. So this is literally just using the root and the lower fifth there. We're, so we're using a C 
and a G. And this will work on for any chords which are rooted on either the A string, the D string, or the G string. So it's really, really useful and has this great sort of earthy sound to it. So let's just take it apart. So it starts off with the two notes on the beat, and then we drop down to the lower fifth, and then back to the root for two eighth notes, like that. So. And I suggest barring and rocking back and forth with your first finger like that. Now, the great thing is we can finish this off with the eighth note and two sixteenth note patterns. So we're gonna play a G, and then we're gonna go back to the C, and then back to the G again. So we end up with this pattern. So the whole groove sounds like this. And you'll hear Jameson using this a ton. So let's hear what it sounds like with the drums. So this is where things start getting super exciting because what we can do is take the two patterns that we've learned and start super imposing them over chord sequences. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a track called Magic Motors, which is from my Rock, Pop and Motown Bassline Creation course, which is available in the Bass Lab Plus membership over at ebassguitar.com. And this is a four bar chord sequence which uses the chords C, E minor, D minor, and G. So all we need to do is simply look at where those roots are on the neck. So this is a bar of C, a bar of E minor, a bar of D, and then a bar of G. The simplest way to play it to begin with is just on the A string, but anywhere those roots appear, you can play them. So let me give you an example. So this is what we'll do. that pattern superimposed where you find those root notes. So let me play it with the backing track so you can hear what this sounds like. using the root fifth and octave ascending. Now let's use the second pattern where we're bouncing off the lower fifth. Let's just root it on the A string to begin with. So that's simply how that pattern works. And don't forget, you can play those roots anywhere where a C, E, D or G appear on the neck and that pattern works. So let me show you this in context. So to wrap up the lesson now, I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna start off by mixing the two patterns together that we've covered. And you'll hear Jameson doing this all the time if you check out Reach Out by the Four Tops. Then I'm gonna start adding some approach notes and fills to this. And this is where things get really interesting and I'm gonna start breaking out a little bit. If you'd like me to cover what I'm doing in here, this in future lessons, make sure you let me know in the comments below. So let's start mixing these two patterns up and you can see how powerful this five minute James Jameson bass line is. Thank you. 
So guys, if you've enjoyed this lesson, make sure you download the free PDF which comes with this lesson so you can see everything we've covered today written out in standard notation and tab. Also, if you want to take the ideas further that I've discussed in this lesson, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. Inside there is the Rock, Pop and Motown Bassline Creation course. You can take that for a spin completely free for 14 days using the link in the description below. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com. I'll catch you next time.